Hello, Taku Fujoshi and the Anime Curious. My name is RandomSama613, and this is Anime Opinions. This week I decided to review an anime I just finished watching called Appleseed13. For those of you unfamiliar with the Appleseed universe, it takes place post-World War V. Yeah, we had a couple of World Wars that they don't talk about, and the entire planet has pretty much been reduced to rubble. It takes place within the city of Olympus, which is one of the few remaining cities left. Uh, and follows the character, primarily follows the characters, uh, Dunin and Briarius. Uh, within Olympus, there are two different kinds of humanoids. Um, you have bioroids, which are effectively clones, and actual humans, which make up about 20% of the population, because the population has just been decimated so hard by World War V. This particular universe was created by Shiro Masamune, who is best known for Ghost in the Shell, which is in the same kind of vein, but they're both a little bit different from each other, obviously. Because this is also a futuristic anime, you have stuff like cyborgs, you have stuff like different machinery, um, robots, that kind of thing. Now, I'm going to get into the review at this point, now I'm going to some backstory. Um, as a disclaimer, I really, really like Appleseed. It's one of my favorite movie franchises. The, it was originally done as two movies, Appleseed and Appleseed Ex Machina. Uh, Appleseed 13 is a redo of this. It's retconning a ton of stuff and changing things. I don't know how accurate either of them are to the manga, I will say right now that I prefer the movies. First off, the biggest problem with Absolute 13 is it's the pacing is awful. It's very slow, which I don't always have a problem with, but it was also boring. I've never had that problem with Appleseed before. As I said, the two movies that come prior to this that have nothing to do with it, although the fun part about the series itself is that it presumes you've seen the movies or more likely read the manga, which is kind of strange for it being a reboot. So it just throws you straight into the anime and doesn't give you any backstory around who the hell these people are, why we are where we are, stuff like that. One of my, one of the other big things that does it for me is the dub. I'm reviewing the dub specifically because the series has been out since 2011 with fan subs and or simulcast. Um, the dub is done by Funimation, who normally does okay, du okay dubs. Or uh, I think in this particular case is Production IG did the dubs. The previous dubs were done by Jenny on Entertainment, and the previous dubs for both the movies were excellent. I thought the voices fit really well. There's, for whatever reason, they were they just they fit. And then I watched the Funimation Production IG dub, and the voices don't fit. It's just it may be from my previous watching bias, but I think that they just they don't work. I'm also going to talk about another thing that really threw me off was the animation style for the foreground, for the actual character models. It felt very motion comic-y, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it just it felt weird and off and didn't mesh properly with how I'm used to an apple seed. So these, these are things that have all bugged me. Um, another, there's, there's some smaller things, like I don't like the character models. Everybody has 80s hair, has like big, huge hair, who has hair, and which just drives me nuts. All the women have like hair. It's ridiculous. Um, which, you know, minor things. On the same kind of lines of it being boring, they were really in love with... There, there's all the symbolism everywhere that they keep, you know, still framing in and having it kind of pop up in the middle of, you know, thought processes and conversations, which really jars jarred me away from immersing into the universe, which was obnoxious and the, it just bugged me. Other little things that annoyed the crap out of me is what they did with Dunin. Uh, originally, Dunin is she's a great female character. She's strong, she's independent, she doesn't have a lot of the annoying tropes that can come with some anime leads, and they put them all in there for her. I found her to be whiny. I thought that her interaction with Briarios, because they are dating, get it, met, fiance, married, whatever the hell it is, uh, I thought they had they added some stupid drama that wasn't necessary which drove me nuts because I thought that they were solid in the movies prior and just they threw in some drama so that they could fill 13 episodes. Uh, it's another thing that, you know, that I think is part of the pacing and how boring it was. They tried to stretch what was what should have been an hour and a half, two hour movie into 13 episodes. And that just messed it up and it, it, just, it just made it bad. Um, there are some pros. 
This isn't all bad. I do have some upsides to this. Um, I'll start with the plot actually later on when you finally get through all of the crap is actually pretty good. Um, I'm not going to spoil anything in case you do want to watch it, but well, they did a good job with what, with what plot they did have. Uh, later on it picks up nicely into what I expect from Appleseed. Along those same lines, the action sequences were good, which is always nice because that's another thing that I find is great with Appleseed is that um, because they're all CG cell shading uh, in different ways, they the action sequences are great. So that was wonderful. The mech design was still great. Uh, they just they stole from the previous two movies, which was fine because the design was great. But you know that's fine. So I was happy with that. And then um, the background animation, the panoramics in the background were beautiful. They did a great job with those. So there are some redeeming qualities to the series. I won't say it's a definitely not watch. I will say it is the lowest rated anime on my hummingbird. <laughs> so there's, there's, you know, I personally did not like it at all. I had to slog through to watch this. I've never had that problem with a 13 episode anime before, which is really surprising. That it, it felt like it dragged on and on and on. So from a lore building standpoint, it gives you some stuff. I still say watch the two movies instead. That are prior to ignore Appleseed 13 from a lore standpoint because it does nothing besides retcon a ton of things that I thought didn't need to be retcon. But those are my thoughts on Appleseed 13. Uh, what did you guys think? Have you seen it? If not, do you think you're going to see it given this recommend, given my pretty much lack of recommendation? You leave your thoughts in the comments. I'd appreciate it. I do read them. I read them last time for all of the suggestions that were given for me, feedback. I really do appreciate it. I've taken it to heart. But yeah, that's all I have to say on LC13. So once again, I'm RandomSama613. This has been Anime Opinions. And until next time, watch more anime.